Okay, I'm going to be showing you how to perform a pivot operation using your graphing calculator and some built-in row operation functions. So to do this, um, I've already entered in the Tableau and I'm going to be performing a pivot on the second row, second element. So here's a picture of the matrix that we'll be starting with. And again, it's going to be this element right here that we'll pivot on. Okay, so to perform the pivot operation, I want to make this element a 1. The element where I'm pivoting should become a 1. So to do that, I'll take 1 third of the second row. The built-in row operation function to do that can be found under second matrix. Scroll over to math. And then the quickest way is to come up from the bottom. And we're going to do times row. The first parameter in the times row function is the multiple. So to make any number of 1, we can multiply it by its reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 3 is 1 third. So our multiple will be 1 third. We will then use the comma. The second parameter should be the name of the matrix. So we'll go back into the matrix menu, second matrix leave it on names and choose the first one there, matrix A. The third parameter of the times row function is the row that we want to multiply by one-third, and that would be the second row. So we'll say comma two, close our parentheses, and now be careful, this operation will not change what's stored in matrix A. So to keep a record of what happens, we need to store the result of this operation into matrix A. We can do that by clicking the STO button, and then going back in and choosing the name of matrix A. Second matrix A. This will take one-third of the second row of matrix A. If I press enter, it shows the result of that, and we do see that the 6 divided by 3 becomes 2, 3 divided by 3 becomes 1, 2 divided by 3 is 2 thirds, and so forth. Alright, so we've made our pivot element a 1. The next step is to make every other element in that column a 0. To do that, we'll use the times row plus function of our calculator. In essence, we'll be taking a negative 3 times row 2, adding in that into row 1, and then also taking 6 times row 2 and adding that into row 3. So here's what it'll look like on your calculator. To get to the times row plus function, we would enter the matrix menu, second matrix, scroll to the math, scroll to the bottom to choose the times row plus function, choose that. The first parameter of the times row plus function is what's the multiple you want to multiply by. In this case, to get the 3 to become a 0, I'm going to multiply the second row by a negative 3. So negative 3, a comma. The next parameter would be the matrix name. So second matrix names, choose matrix A. Enter. The third parameter would be what you're going to multiply, or what row you're going to multiply negative 3 by. In that case, that will be the second row. I want to multiply the second row by a negative 3 and add it into row 1. So multiply row 3, sorry, multiply row 2 by negative 3, add that into row 1. And likewise, we want to store this result into matrix A, second matrix A, and press enter. And sure enough, we can see that the 3 became a 0. Likewise, I need to get rid of the negative 6, make it a 0. So how about 6 times the second row, add it into the third row. A quick way to get the previous executed command up would be second enter. Since I'm going to use that times row plus function again, I can quickly get there, then use my arrow keys to move over. This time we want to multiply this second row by 6. 
So we need to change that to a 6. We're going to use matrix A, multiply the second row by 6, and add it into the, not the first row, but the third row, and continue to store that in matrix A. And now we can see we've performed a successful pivot operation, which involved changing the pivot element to a 1, and every other element in that column becomes a 0. At this point, we'd want to observe the last row and notice that we have no negative entries in the last row. Therefore, we must be at an optimal solution. Um, we have decimals. Notice we can convert it to fractions by hitting the math frac button and pressing enter. Now we can see it written in its fraction form. Again, notice the last row, 11, 0, 2, 0, 2, 1, 30. We have no negative entries, therefore we are at an optimal solution. And we can read the solution from this result then. We can see that x sub 1 is non-basic, so x sub 1 will equal 0. x sub 2 is basic. It's a unit column. And the second row is the one with the leading one in it. So if we scroll over, we can see that x sub 2 must be 5. x sub 3 is a not a unit column. That means it's a non-basic column. So x sub 3 has the value of 0. By definition, non-basic variables are 0. The s sub 1 column is a unit column, and so it's basic and s sub 1 has the value of 3. s sub 2 is non-basic, so it has the value of 0. And z has the value of 30.